Now this video covers the repair we did on an RG250. This is a bike that was not sold in the United States. It's hard and impossible to get parts for. And we had to do a major repair. Parts were actually missing and I used Obichi wood. And that's on a previous video. And the, the repair came out great. Nothing, nothing weak here or anything, but I wanted to, on this video, do the outside surface. And this is really a paint um, issue that I wanted to show how to prep it after doing that level of repair where you've actually replaced parts. It requires a lot of sanding and a lot of prepping. Sometime a little bit of Bondo, but instead of Bondo, we're going to use CA on this. The Obichi wood responds well to CA. It's a model airplane product, basically, 64th plywood. And I've used it many, many times to create parts of a fairing that were missing or very damaged. And these are the parts that we worked on, the fairing parts, and what they looked like when we were done. I would venture to say they look better than new, they're stronger than new, and we didn't have to import anything from anywhere. Now, when you're trying to salvage a part that's very damaged like this and has pieces actually missing, one of the things you have to do, sometimes you have to think outside the box, and the Obichi wood, that's a, again a modeling product, and I wound up using CA and laminating it inside and outside to the point where it was ready to sand in. Now, what makes this a practical repair is CA. The CA is going to allow me to get what I call a blend, where you will not see where the wood ends and the, the fiberglass begins. This is one of the products. This is thick CA. We use thin and thick. Thick you can use to build up a skin on the part itself. Whether it's wood, fiberglass, it'll even stick to aluminum. So being able to repa replace that part of the fairing that was missing. Now, if we had the part, of course, we could have glued it back in and done all kind of uh, things to make it smooth. But this repair actually worked out pretty good and actually made it stronger than a standard part. So I was happy with that. Anytime I can reinforce something and make it stronger, and Obichi wood is very, very versatile. It's something that, in this case, I it would have been really difficult to do that with composite material with fiberglass. Obichi wood, it bends, it twists, and then when you hit it with thick or thin CA, it becomes like carbon fiber. It becomes a rock. You can grind it, you can sand it, but this is the trick right here, is to take some thick CA. Once you have the basic shape, and you know that's just basic sanding to get it to that point. Now I want to build up a skin. This is this is so that when I'm all done, I will not see the joint between that wood and the fiberglass. And what makes it possible is the thin CA that we used for the repair is capillary. And the thin CA is actually stronger than the material that this part is made out of. So even if this bike were to be crashed again, I don't think it would break where that wood is. It's going to break where the, the plastic is or the fiberglass, whatever that material happens to be. And it's hard to convince people that are not modelers how strong this material is. This is 164th plywood, Obichi wood. It's used to make aircraft and even more important to make model aircraft where strength and lightweight are the ultimate consideration and that it's going to be able to take a real, real beating here. Now in this job we were very lucky. The decals that were on, the, the Suzuki, the lettering, was not under clear. So what it meant is you could use a heat gun and a brand new razor and basically get it off without a lot of aggravation. It really, and we were lucky, it did come right off. Uh, next step is a critical step. Use an acetone to get whatever residue from those stickers off. Now, I've used Gooby Gone, I've used lacquer thinner, <laughs> urethane thinner, but it always seems like acetone works the best. And in this case, there really was some goop under there. It required a lot of scraping, but we're going to sand this whole part anyway, so it didn't really matter at this point. Now, we caught another relatively small but important lucky break on this job. 
usually some of the lettering or all of it or the trim or some of it is actually under the, the clear and boy does that add to the job the aggravation being able to get the stickers off with a heat gun and these did come off that we caught just another break now because I wanted to paint I was going to go right down a primer I want that paint to get an absolutely perfect bond we have a brand new box of 100 grit and this is the best if you really want to get some material removed in a hurry and you have an orbital sander or I have the big one and I have the detail one this will really make the job go very quick now we couldn't salvage it the point is I didn't want to paint over a paint job that I don't know what and for sure the paint jobs 30 years old or something by now anyway so being able to scuff this part in with a power sander just made this a relatively straightforward easy job now you can see I've already reinforced everywhere that a bolt goes that's on a previous video and I want to blend in that part that's a new actually a new part of Obichi wood I want that to be brand new and I want that to be the whole surface to be scuffed as much as possible so that our first coat of prime gets a good bite because again we're dealing with some very very old paint here and I don't know the condition of it and if, as soon as I hit that with anything that's got thinner in it I don't know if we're gonna have an alligator or what we're gonna have but we're gonna by doing it this way by just biting the bullet and like putting a good foundation on a house we we bite the bullet here put a couple extra hours in of getting this sanded right down to material so it is as little paint as possible on it's got a good tooth with 100 grit it'll have a really good tooth may need more than one coat of primer and then to sand it down to get it smooth but it won't matter because what we're dealing with here is a part you cannot go out on the internet and just say oh I'll buy that part oh you'll get one for for this amount of money or that amount and even if you were to find this part what's going to happen is they're going to want exorbitant amount of money for it and and then when you get it it's going to be cracked and broken and who knows what and you got to go through this process anyway now because we want this part to be absolutely flawless when we're done the the whole trick is is this is the part of it that's got to be right we've got to get that smooth and get it rough and you can see on a detail sander that's going to allow me I can move the, the pad to three different places it, it it's going to allow me to do this with a machine that normally would take a really long time with a sanding block and by hand even a soft block and a hard block having these power tools makes it at least go a little bit quicker and the result is you get that material off a lot easier and cleaner even if you use paint remover it wouldn't be this I don't think this easy now this is some information that I think everybody can use that does this kind of repair when you sand the whole part down like this and we sanded the trim off and sanded the opichi down back down to wood you've got to keep a skin of thick or thin CA or both again you can do it with thin CA it'll take more coats the thick CA probably two coats is enough and you keep the rag moving it's a paper towel ordinary bounty paper towel this is kind of the t kind of technology I've put on the videos many many times and it's so many people have contacted me and said they really appreciate this kind of information so between the obichi wood and between the ca you you can do some pretty amazing stuff and you don't even need any carbon fiber that obichi wood when it's done is, is probably going to be stronger i don't know but anyway not a, it's not a they're both strong enough now you need at this point once you get the power tools done you need to be very very patient with one sanding block and start with some I think this is 120 it doesn't matter 180 and just get that smooth then maybe replace the paper with some 400 sand that smooth and if you do go through back down to wood if you or if you can feel a part that's just not right simple answer go sand some more or put another coat of CA on that's the nice thing about working with CA you can just keep putting coat after coat after coat and it dries instantly and if you're doing this kind of repair try to avoid using kicker just let it dry it'll dry in 45 seconds to a minute and then at some point in time you want to take some fine sandpaper like 180 and 
the radius, and it's really a critical thing, a repaired part like this, if it has any sharp edges, I call them razor edges, what's going to ultimately happen is in time, that's where the paint is going to tend to crack. And then, uh, let's face it, this is a two-stroke bike. <laughs> it's going to have some vibration in it. So I don't want to have that after all this work, we put the bike back together and you go to one of the meetups and there's a big crack in the part. So radiusing all the, part, all the edges, super, super, super critical. Now this is critical information. This is the kind of stuff it's worth watching a video. If you're new to painting and you're painting something that has parts where you've sanded through into the plastic or you're going over old paint, critical information. Use primer sealer. That word sealer is so important. Just use an ordinary auto primer, mm, it's a maybe. If you put one or two coats of this on and it's best to put the coats on thin, not get any runs, not get it too glocky that it's, it's ugly looking and drippy and everything. Thin coats, always better to put thin coats on. But the biggest thing is it's gotta be primer sealer. That means the chemically this is gonna seal what's underneath. Now we wanna seal where that wood is, that Obichi wood, and that repair, I was amazed when I was done with this job. That repair was absolutely bulletproof. And all that was left when we were done was to line up the windshield and put the screws in. That, that just made that so, so nice. So anything that, anything that I can do at this point in time to radius edges, get the part perfectly clean with some degreaser. And once we get out there again, shake, shake, shake. I call it shake, shake, shake Sonora. This, especially when it's cold out, leave the can in in a heated room until you're actually ready to use it if it's cold. Now, a mistake I've made is go put the can outside when it's snowing out or cold or something. And it, when we're doing this, obviously it's winter. And so the trick is leave it warm right to the last minute. And in this case, I want to, since we're going to paint both sides of this, ultimately, I want to have the edges nice and smooth. This is going to be at least two coats, maybe three, but because of the size and the shape of the part, I just want to take my time. This is a, gr a good time to remind yourself, once this primer is sanded out and you're ready for the final paint job, the hard work is done. This is the hard work. This is the foundation of the house. And once this is right, it's right forever. And once you leave a spot where it cracks or peels or a bolt hole isn't reinforced, then you, you go back and ah to disassemble a bike and repair it and repaint it. It's always better to, at this point in time, have that extra cup of coffee. Let each coat of primer dry. And if you need to sand it between coats, take some 400 sandpaper and wet sand it. And if you've done a real good job up to this point, you can be pretty confident this is going to work out great. But again, you never know until that final coat of primer is dry. And then the trick I always use in cold weather, let it dry at least a day extra of what you normally would do in the summer. And then pretty much you'll be ready for the paint job, the back masking, the trim. And in this case, we put a labor of love into this. And when I was done, what, what happened? We got a labor of love out of it. It turned out to be just perfect. And the truth is, every time we went on a ride with Mark, we did a lot of two-stroking. And just love the fact that that fairing came out so nice. That was that was worth all of the time we put into it. And again, you just can't buy these parts because these are bikes that were not sold in the United States. And it just becomes a, a labor of love. I know Mark appreciates it, as do all the friends I work for. And just love the sound of that two-stroke. I was so happy to hear that run. And th this is just one of the things about motorcycling. The friends you have, the friends you make, it's hard to describe. Now, Mark, of course, has a wonderful collection of older bikes, and this is now one of them. And he has ridden the wheels off of this. This All of the time we spent, well worth it. 
and I hope if you're new to the channel, I hope you'll subscribe and enjoy watching all our videos in the future. And thanks so much for watching.